Passing the Mantle In this video, we will discuss the shift from Elijah, God's fiery prophet, to Elisha, his young protege. These prophets give an interesting study in contrast. Elijah summoned fire to Mount Carmel, challenged the prophets of Baal, and prayed, bringing an end to a three-year drought. Elisha was a more gentle-spirited individual. A comparable difference can be found between John the Baptist and the Lord Jesus. God employs various personalities in different ways and at specific times. God summons Elisha to begin his apprenticeship with Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19. When Elijah encountered Elisha, he was hard at work in his father's farm. Because the ministry is not for the lazy, God frequently calls individuals who are already occupied. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, New King James Version. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he was with the twelfth. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. Elijah removed his cloak, akin to an overcoat or cape, and placed it on Elisha's shoulders as a symbol of God's calling you into service. Elisha abandoned his land and family to become a youthful disciple of the prophet Elijah. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 21, New King James Version. So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh, using the oxen's equipment, and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. Elisha was called by God, yet he was mentored by Elijah, the older man. He ministered to and alongside Elijah. This is a lovely depiction of ministry, cooperation, and transition. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 11, New King James Version. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here? that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. 1. Remembering God's Power 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1-8, through 8, New King James Version And it came to pass, when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came back to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know, keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. Before being carried away to heaven, Elijah accompanied young Elisha to several specific locations that were reminders of God's strength, geographical tributes of God's faithfulness. We must recall the history. Elijah was teaching Elisha about the memory of a nation. Someone once stated that the past is not meant to be an anchor to hold us back, but rather a rudder to direct us. Remembering should not be a parking lot where we stay, but rather a launch pad that propels us into the future. Elisha and Elijah made stops in Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, and at the Jordan River. Gilgal was the starting point since it was the first encampment in the Promised Land 
where the children of Israel camped after crossing the Jordan River. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 30, New King James Version. Are they not on the other side of the Jordan, toward the setting sun, in the land of the Canaanites, who dwell in the plain opposite Gilgal, beside the terebinth trees of Moreh? We should remember where we started. Do you recall where you first met the Lord? We should never forget how we initially came to know Jesus as our Savior. Despite Elijah's attempts to journey to Bethel without Elisha, the young man refused. He was aware that these were Elijah's final days, and he was determined to remain close to him. Elijah desired the same thing. Bethel was the location of the return. Jacob had met God at Bethel and had named the location of the house of God. God continuously called Jacob back to Bethel throughout his life. Genesis chapter 35 verses 1 through 15, New King James Version. Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau your brother. And Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you, purify yourselves, and change your garments. Then let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me in the way which I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands, and the earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree, which was by Shechem. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were all around them, and they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. And he built an altar there, and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared to him when he fled from the face of his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried below Bethel, under the terebinth tree. So the name of it was called Alan Bakuth. Then God appeared to Jacob again, when he came from Paddan Aram, and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob any more, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you, and to your descendants after you I give this land. Then God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. So Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering on it, and he poured oil on it. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him, Bethel. Bethel reminds us to return to the Lord on a daily basis. It's where you spend your time reading the Bible, praying, and walking with the Lord. They walked to Jericho after Bethel. Jericho was a place of triumph. God gave the children of Israel a huge triumph at Jericho, and they learnt the power of obeying God's word. Joshua chapter 6, New King James Version. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city. All you men of war, you shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass, when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests hear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the Ark of the Lord. So it was, when Joshua had spoken to the people, that seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. 
The armed men went before the priests, who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark, while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, Shout, then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them. But the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. So they did six days. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early, about the dawning of the day, and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened, when the priests blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed when you take of the accursed things, and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are consecrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said to the two men who had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and from there bring out the woman, and all that she has, as you swore to her. And the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. But they burned the city and all that was in it with fire. Only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua spared Rahab, the harlot, her father's household, and all that she had. So she dwells in Israel to this day, because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Then Joshua charged them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord who rises up and builds this city, Jericho. He shall lay its foundation with his firstborn, and with his youngest he shall set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame spread throughout all the country. The prophet's sons appeared in both Bethel and Jericho. These were preachers' children. Samuel appears to have founded schools to educate the prophet's sons. They were aware that Elijah was ready to depart, but Elisha kept them quiet in order to preserve the precious moment. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 3-5, through 5, New King James Version Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know, keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came back to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know, keep silent. The Jordan River served as the point of entry. The Jordan River had been split by God to allow the children of Israel to reach the Promised Land. Joshua Chapter 3 New King James Version Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Akachia Grove, and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was, after three days, that the officers went through the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, 
when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Do not come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Then Joshua spoke to the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you have come to the edge of the water of the Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here, and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. Now, therefore, take for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe, and it shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. So it was, when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan, with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as those who bore the Ark came to the Jordan, and the fleet of the priests who bore the Ark dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest, that the waters which came down from upstream stood still, and rose in a heap very far away at Adam, the city that is beside Zadartan. So the waters that went down into the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, failed and were cut off, and the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Then the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 8, New King James Version now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. He performed it once more for Elijah, and then once more for Elisha. Allow God to have his marvelous way when you are confronted with an impassable stream. Let us recall our Jordan River experiences when God separated the rivers to solve seemingly insurmountable challenges. Would you be busy doing something for the Lord if you knew it was your last day on earth? God was preparing Elijah and Elisha. The ministry's mantle was about to be handed over. 2. Requesting God's Power 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 9-11, through 11, New King James Version And so it was, when they had crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you, before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened, and they continued on and talked, that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire, and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. When given the opportunity, Elisha requested God to give him double the power to carry out his ministry. Elijah acknowledged the gravity of the request, but assured Elisha that it would be granted if you see me when I am taken from you. Elijah died in the same way he came, in a blaze of glory. That's what will happen when we depart. We'll be out of here, whether by the rapture or the resurrection. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 12 New King James Version. And Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. 
When Elisha saw Elijah take off, he delivered a one-line eulogy to his mentor. Elijah, you are more valuable to God's people than military armies. He said in military terms, people of God who love Jesus and know how to pray are the genuine source of power for any nation. 3. Receiving God's Power Elisha assumed Elijah's mantle. Elijah was no longer present, but Elijah's God was. Even God's saints pass away, yet God lives on and continues to perform miracles. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 14-24, through 24, New King James Version Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him, and struck the water, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. Now when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him, and bowed to the ground before him. Then they said to him, Look now, there are fifty strong men with your servants. Please let them go and search for your master, lest perhaps the spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, You shall not send anyone. But when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send them. Therefore they sent fifty men, and they searched for three days, but did not find him. And when they came back to him, for he had stayed in Jericho, he said to them, Did I not say to you, Do not go? Then the men of the city said to Elisha, Please notice the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new bowl, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the source of the water, and cast in the salt there, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From it there shall be no more death or barrenness. So the water remains healed to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. Then he went up from there to Bethel, and as he was going up the road, some youths came from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. So he turned around and looked at them, and pronounced a curse on them in the name of the Lord. And two female bears came out of the woods and mauled forty-two of the youths. Elisha began doing miracles. He did get a double portion. He ministered twice as long as Elijah and produced twice as many miracles. Three miracles occurred immediately. The Jordan River was divided once more, this time for the new spiritual leader. The spring in Jericho was sweetened, and those who were disrespectful were dealt with harshly. 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verse 16, New King James Version But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. The clearest indication of God in a ministry is the outcome. It was characterized as fruit by Jesus. Matthew chapter 7, verse 20, New King James Version Therefore by their fruits you will know them. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 25, New King James Version Then he went from there to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. Elisha went to Mount Carmel, the site of Elijah's greatest triumph, as well as another memorial moment. But you won't be able to stay on Mount Carmel. Elijah, please leave. Elisha steps forward.